Today we're going to dive into Figma, so if you're interested in learning Figma for designing websites, but you don't have a lot of experience in the tool yet, then this video is for you, because I've made sure that we're going to use the most important features in Figma in order to create this design. And the project that we're going to create together is this simple homepage for a gym. It has a big background image with a transparent header and an overlapping icon row, a text section with an image on the side, and a simple footer with social media icons. And all you need to do is make sure you have a Figma account, which is free to do. Just click over here, make an account, then go to your drafts, click on new design file. And from here on, I'm gonna give you all the images, the colors and everything you need to recreate the design. And after that, feel free to use it in your portfolio. Just change up the design a little bit and then it's fine. So how Figma essentially works is that everything is in a horizontal box or a vertical box, as you can see right here. And this is basically how the web actually works. So designing in Figma will make you understand the web even better. So now let's just get started. The first step is the structure of the layout. So look at this design. It has three sections. This first one, then the text section, and then the footer. And it's better to first create those three sections so that you're not gonna focus on the details too soon because that's what designers like to do, but it slows down your progress. So let's just do that. So in your new file, we first need to create an artboard. So before we can start adding text and colors, we first need a frame. And a frame is kind of like a page. So you do that by creating a frame over here. So if you click on the frame, then on the right over here, you can see a lot of options. And the one I always start out with is desktop. So click on the desktop, that's 1440 pixels in width. And like I said, let's first create our three main sections. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over here, grab the rectangle and then create a shape like this. Then you can drag the edges and make sure it aligns to the top. Then we have an empty space over here. And then we have a footer at the bottom. So we can create another shape from here, but it's easier to make a duplicate of this one. So hold Alt or Option and then click and drag, and then it will make a duplicate. Now you wanna align it exactly in the middle. So here we're gonna use our Align option, which is a lot nicer than just trying to make it fit in. So just click on Middle Align and then over here to the bottom because that's what we want. And now we only have to drag this part down and it's still perfectly aligned. But our design is a little bit short. So if you grab your artboard or frame over here, then you can make the whole artboard a bit longer. You can, by the way, zoom out by holding Command or Control. It's Alt or Control on Windows, I'm not really sure. And then just drag it down. Or you can simply change the number over here. I'm gonna change it to 1700 like this. Okay, so now we can put the footer again at the bottom with this tool and make it a little bit higher. And for our top part, we also gonna make it a little bit higher. We will do this overlapping part later because that's a little bit harder. But for now, let's just create the shape for our image. So now I'm gonna grab a new rectangle like this. You can also access that by clicking on the R and then create a rectangle like this. All right, but now where do we actually align it? That's a problem. So now we need to dive into the grid. So as you probably have noticed, all websites are based on a grid. And some websites scale this grid, but most websites keep the content in a specific pixel width because otherwise the text boxes become too wide and it's not comfortable to read. And we need this grid to align our image. So let's just do that. I'm gonna click on my artboard over here. And then over here, you can see layout grids. You can click on the plus over here. It creates a standard grid, but that is a horizontal and vertical grid. So click on this one over here, click on columns because we just want 12 columns. 12 is the industry standard because you can easily create two boxes, three and four and six, which is kind of nice. So we're gonna use 12 columns. It doesn't do anything, but you need to click outside of it to see the changes. Put it on center because now it stretches. Sometimes you want that, but for this design, I don't want that. So click on center, but then you need to tell Figma how wide each column should be. And a common use size for this is 75. Why? Well, because then from here to here, it's 1120 pixels, which is used in many builder tools like Elementor. So as you can see, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I aligned it almost perfectly in one pixel, which is a coincidence. So that's kind of funny. So I'm gonna align that to the grid 
And I'm also going to make it a little bit wider like this because I want it to stretch over six columns like this. And if you do that, you can see that it's exactly 150 pixels from this section and from this section. You can actually activate that by holding option or command. And then you can see the pixels if you hover with your mouse, which is nice. Okay, so now let's add some colors. I'm going to go to the fill over here and I'm going to change the color to pure black because I want to use pure black on this website. And then you can go on this shape and also put it on black. But there is a trick here, which you should know, which is the asset colors. Because for example, black is used in many places in this design. So you want to save that color so you can reuse it later. So now this one is black. Then you click on these four dots. It's called style. And then you can add this color to the color styles. They call it color styles over here. It's called asset, color assets in Adobe XD. It's all the same thing. It's global colors. That's what I actually think they should call it. So you click on the plus and then you you give it a name, for example, black. All right. And you click on create style. And now this one is saved. So if you then click on another shape, instead of just changing the color from here, you can click on the four dots again and then select your black. As you can see, a little bit easier. For this one, we don't have to change the color because in our design, this background is actually soft gray. So if you want to use the same colors as me, you can drag in the files. So I will share these files in the description below so you can download them. And then you can drag in my colors if you want to like this, make it a little bit larger. So here are my colors. It's just a screenshot from my Figma actually. And then you can grab the background. So grab your artboard. Now it's set to white, which is F, 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 F. So you click over here and now you can click on this tool. You can also access that by the way, by clicking I. So you click on this one and then you go over the soft gray and boom, there you click it. And I also recommend to also add that color to your style. So click on the four dots again and call it a soft gray, create style. So where are all these global colors saved? Well, you can access them by clicking outside of your artboard, just not in your design, but outside. And then you can see it over here, local styles. And here are your colors. You can change them afterwards. So let's say that you want to change your black to maybe not 100% black, but a little bit uh, softer. Then as you can see, it changes in your whole design, which of course is awesome. But just put it at a little bit lighter like this. And then the last thing that we need to do is create this diagonal shape that's also really easy to do. You can just uh, click on the shape, then double click it again. And now you can access the individual points. So you can grab this one and put it up like this. Yeah, that's something like our design. All right, and then click outside, double click it. And now we're done. So the basic structure is here. Let's now move to images and icons. So here's the image that we need. So you could drag in the image like this and then mask it like this. But what I like to do is just click on the image over here. And then instead of using a color, use a image as a background. So now this is connected to the global colors. I'm going to disconnect that click over here. And then you can select instead of a solid, you can select an image. And now you can drag your image over here and then it masks. You even have some very simple editing over here. If you want to change the image a little bit, let's just increase the opacity a bit. That looks pretty cool. And now your image is in here but it's not in the right position. So if you hold option or alt and double click, then you can reposition it like this. Make sure to hold shift so it scales proportionally and then put it in the position you want. Just look at our example. This is where I want him to be. But now we have a gap over here. So click outside of it. So what's beautiful about Figma is that you can have multiple layers within a fill. So now we have an image as a layer in a fill, but we can add another layer on top of it. So if you click on the plus, you can add a layer on top of it. So now it's a solid, which is on 20% opacity. So if I increase that, you're not gonna see him. But if we then go to linear, which is a gradient, then we can say like, we want to go from black to white. So this left one is on black 100% and this right one is on 0%. It doesn't look like it's on 100% because this layer also has an opacity. So I'm gonna change that to 100. And now you can see that we're almost there. So I'm gonna open my gradient again. I'm just gonna grab this point and just position it over here. So this is pretty cool as you can see, two layers in one shape. We didn't have to group anything and it's all here on the right. All right, for this image, I'm gonna do the same. So I'm gonna click over here, 
then go to solid image, then drag in my image over here. And there she is. We can reposition it again, but I'm fine with this. So now we have two images. Let's drag in some icons. So I'm going to go to my folder. I have three SVG icons over here, which are vector icons, and then drag them into your Figma like this. They're not all the same size and we want them to be smaller anyways. So let's just uh, make uh, one of them. Let's just drag it in over here and let's just make that one a lot smaller. For this design, I want them to be 30 by 30. So you can just drag it over here and then look at the numbers. Or you can go over here and then change the width and the height. So if you put this one at 40, it's going to stretch. So if you don't want that, then make sure this one is linked. And then if you change it, it's going to change the width and the height. So for now, I'm going to put it at 30. I'm also going to do that for these two. Can select both of them by holding shift select this one and then put them at 30 and now you can see that we have the three icons drag them over here and now we're going to use auto layout for the first time this is the most amazing feature i think in figma so if you select all of them and you click on shift a it's going to create a grid this is not a group it's kind of like a group with a lot more features so in a, a tool like adobe xd you would group everything but here auto layout is a lot nicer because now for example you can do things like this but like i said in the intro it's vertical or it's horizontal we also want these icons to be white so if you go down over here you can see what kind of colors we're working with for these icons so i can put them on white and i also want to add white to my color so create a style call it white and there we go all right let's add our icons to the grid but our grid is gone i did that by holding shift g then you can hide and show your grid or you can go over here and then uh, use this eye over here. So make sure to add your icons over here. And we're gonna work a lot more with auto layout in the next step, which is working with text layers. <laughs> Okay, so let's add some text layers. Let's just first start with the big one. So this one over here, this one, and this one. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna select T for the text tool. I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna uh, type fight like a champion. And here you can see the newest feature in Figma, which is auto correct, really cool. So if you're in your text layer, Figma can now auto correct it, super cool. The font that I wanna use here is Sarah and then condensed. You can click over here, all the Google fonts are automatically already loaded in and then i want to use the bold version i want it to be 130 in terms of size and i want the text to be in capitals that's a little bit hidden over here if you click on type settings then over here you can put it on uppercase all right so now i'm going to decrease the width of the text layer because i want it to break as you can see in my design after like it doesn't do that right here which i don't really like so for now i'm just going to click after the a and then click on shift enter to get what I want. But as you can see, the line height is much too high and you can change that over here, line height. I'm gonna put it at 90%. For many other text layers, you wanna use a higher percentage, above 100, but for big titles, it's less. This also really depends on the font, but that is what I found. All right, so now let's just turn on the grid again so I can align it. By the way, I don't really see the red on this black background. So let's just also change our grid color. So I'm gonna click on my artboard. I'm gonna go to the grid again. And I'm just gonna change the color over here to something we can actually see. Maybe something like this blue. It's a little bit intense over here, but we need to see it. All right, that's a little bit better. Now we can at least see what we're doing. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna turn off the grid again with shift C. And as you can see in my design, the word champion is red. So let's just make this word red now. I'm gonna double click it and then I'm gonna click on the plus gonna change the fill to a red color like this 100% opacity actually I think the color was more something like this so okay so now this text is red as well let's just now make a smaller version of this text so I'm gonna make a duplicate by holding option or alt like this and now I'm gonna change the size over here to 50 and the line height 110% because if it's smaller, you need a little bit more space. All right, in my design, this text is black. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna create a fill and I'm gonna put it at black. And of course, we're gonna use our global colors. And this text is the same size as this text. So now we can also save this color to our global font. So in the same way, click on the four dots and then click on plus and I call it something that you want. For example, I'm gonna call it heading two because this big one is heading one. Make sure to click on create style and now you can see that it changed. So now if we make a duplicate of this text and we make it white and we click outside of our artboard, we can see our global font over here. And if we change it over here, so let's say we're gonna change it line height 
Now it changes both of them. All right, perfect. So click on the grid again, make sure to align it, change the text, decrease its width. And in our design, the word next is red. So let's try to select the red, but as you can see, we haven't saved the red. So we need to go back to this one and then this red, we need to save it. So let's just go to fill style, click on the plus and then call this red, create the style. So now this text has red and white. I also haven't connected the white as you can see like this. So now if you go to this layer and you select the next, you can click on white and then click on red. And now this whole text layer has two global colors, as you can see. Perfect. We have two more simple text layers, which is this one and the menu. So let's just create that. I'm gonna click on the T again, create a text box like this. And I wanna paste some lorem ipsum in. I haven't installed any plugins yet to do that. So I'm just gonna use my Chrome extension, but there are ways in Figma to do this. I will make a separate video about handy plugins, by the way. So paste your lorem ipsum text in. And now we need to detach the global colors because we want another style for our body. I wanna use the font inter. It's gonna be a lot smaller, like 16 which is a good size for body font. The line height needs to be 170 because that looks better for um, body text. Color that I wanna use is gray, but it's the darker gray. For body text, you almost always want a font that is a little bit lighter because otherwise the contrast is too harsh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color pick my color that I have prepared like this. And of course, I'm gonna add that color to the palette as well, gray. Okay, we don't want all capitals. We just want it to be normal like this. And we also don't want everything to be bold. It should just be regular. Now this looks like a great body text. I also see that I forgot to change the text. Turn on the grid again to make sure to align it on the grid. So this one on the left and then this one to the edges. I'm gonna add a enter over here to make it a little bit more readable. And then never forget to add the fonts to your globals. So over here, we're gonna do that. We're calling this body text, create the style. This one, I also haven't connected that, but of course we're gonna use the heading two because this one is also on heading two. All right, let's now go to the menu because that's the last step before we're gonna go to the combinations of icons and text. And we're gonna use auto layout for that. So uh, let's just copy this one with alt or option. Let's make it white. Let's detach the heading two because we wanna make a new style. This one needs to be 16. All right, this is the styling that we want. So I'm gonna add that to the styles again. I know it's a little bit of work in the beginning, but you're going to thank me later for this. Okay, I'm going to call this menu. Okay, now I'm going to change this to home, but this text box is a little bit too wide. So if you double click over here, then it just becomes a single item. Okay, so I'm going to create some other ones. You can now select all of them, but if I try, then my image is going to move. So... In a situation like this, where you're working on a background, I would suggest to grab your background layer, then right click and then lock or unlock, or you can do command shift L. And now you can just easily select your layers like this. Click shift A again for auto layout. And there it is, your menu. What's also great about auto layout, by the way, is that you can click and then change its positions and it sticks, as you can see, it's really, really nice. We want 30 pixels in between. All right, I'm gonna position it and we need some space for the button. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it right here. And then the last little detail that, that I forgot to add is this little line over here. I've just used the rectangle tool, to be honest. So clicked on the rectangle, create a little rectangle and then select it to red like this. And then made my title a little bit smaller. That's actually all I've done. Okay, and this is all we need for now. Oh, and I also forgot one other thing and that is on the bottom bottom over here, we have terms and conditions and privacy. These are just two simple text layers with the body font. So you could just click T and just type in privacy policy. Then make sure to pick your body font like this, post it over here, make a duplicate and change the other one and make sure to both align them in the grid. We're gonna auto layout them later, but for now, this is all we need. Okay, it's starting to look like something. So let's just go to the next step where we're gonna take it a step farther with auto layout. Okay, let's now finish our menu with the logo on the left and the button on the right. And we're gonna drag in this icon that we're gonna use. And we're gonna drag it, let's say outside of here. I'll first make it white because otherwise we can't see it and then drag it in over here, make it a bit bigger. Then I'm gonna copy my title, change the text. I'm gonna make it uh, 32. This icon, I want that to be red. 
So right now it's white, I'm gonna make it red. And again, select both of them and make an auto layout of it. Now we wanna create our button. So in most other tools, you first create a background and then you put a text on top of it and then you group it. But in Figma, this is a little bit different with buttons. So I wanna use the same text style over here, but when I duplicate this one with Command D, it's gonna stick inside of this frame, which is not what I want. So you can simply click and then drag outside of it. And now, it's free from the auto layout. Change it to sign up. Now turn this one also into an auto layout with shift A. And then it's gonna add this box. You don't see it yet, but there is a box. Let's make that box visible by giving it a fill. So I'm gonna go to fill. I'm gonna give it a red background. And now you can see the box. As you can see this frame only contains a text. It's kind of like a group, but then a little bit different. But the beautiful thing about this is that you can increase the horizontal padding like this and the vertical padding as well. I think 10 is all right. And we need another button over here. Let's first position it. So I'm gonna turn on my grid again. I'm gonna position it and I wanna make sure that it's in line with the logo. And also I want this one to be aligned. So you can try to do it yourself or you can just select all of them and then press auto layout again. And now it's automatically aligned in the middle, but we don't want the menu over here. We want this space to be less. So here you create another auto layout because by default it will space out all the items evenly. So if you then select this one and this one, give it an auto layout again with shift A, and then you can decrease this size to, for example, 30. And now you can decrease this size or you can just drag the side over here and then make it wider. But that doesn't work. Why? Well, because there's another tool you should know and that is a little bit hidden. It's under here. So if you go to advanced layout, by default, it's just stacking or packed. But if you put it on space between, then it will automatically create that space within the box or within that container. This actually works the same way as the container does. So now we have this one one, which is a horizontal container. We have this one, which is horizontal and also has some gap in between. And then we have this whole container, which just sees the right part as one part and then the left part as one part. And it creates as much space as possible in between. So now if we decrease this, as you can see, it scales perfectly. Okay, let's now add another button over here. But hey, we've already learned that we can reuse things. So this is the same for the button. So I'm gonna click on the button again, double click it. And now we're gonna use this feature called component. So if you click on this icon, it creates a component and a component is a reusable element. So this works similar to global colors and fonts, but it's not saved in the same place. So if you click outside of your artboard, it's not saved over here. They have it over here on the assets. So here you can see desktop, we have this button. So now it's better to drag the button from here into our design like this. And here you can see, if you go back to the layers, that this is a frame. Now it has this shape, which shows that this is a component, but this is not the main component. You can always find the main component by right click and then click on go to main component. And if you change this component, because this is the main one, then the other one will change as well. So let's just try that. If I'm gonna increase the size, as you can see, the other one scales up as well. So let's just do that. Let's just put it on 30, make the button a bit bigger, and that works perfectly. So let's now add auto layout to this section. So what do we see here? We have this this part, this part, and this part, which are aligned vertically. But if we select all of them and press Command A, then it's gonna be stacked vertically. So you need to uh, go a step back with Command Z. These two parts need to be horizontal. So I'm gonna make an auto layout of this one first and then Figma already sees that it's uh, it's horizontal. And now Figma sees this as one element. So now we can take all of them and press Shift A again. And now we can change the values over here and then it does what we want. All right, let's align this in the middle. I want the image to be the same size. So let's we'll just resize that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's just do one more exercise with auto layout because this is so important. Okay, so in our final design in the footer, we have this icon over here and then uh, email and then the terms and conditions and privacy over here. We're gonna use the same trick. First, we need an icon, and an icon is not part of this folder because I wanted to show you something. So if you go to iconfinder.com, this is a beautiful website, you can uh, take a look at their packages. They have beautiful icons over here, but if you just search over here, for example, to email, 
you can find all kinds of icons. Not all of them are free, but a lot of them are free. So this one, for example, that one looks nice. So by default, it's on PNG, but you can go to SVG, which is vector. And then if you click on copy over here and you go back to your Figma and you paste it, it's already there and you don't have to save it on your computer first. It's beautiful. So let's just uh, change that to white. All right, I'm gonna put it in the footer over here. I need a text layer for my email, info at boxchampy.com. Okay, so let's now add auto layout to this whole section. First, let's select all of them, but now it's also select the background. So I'm gonna lock that background again, select all of them, shift A, that doesn't work. So we need to create a box over here and a box over here. So this one in auto layout, this one in auto layout, and then these two boxes in another auto layout. And then as you can see, it perfectly aligns as well. Show that again. This one already was in an auto layout. So if you want these two to be aligned in the middle, you also select both of them and auto layout. Perfect, right? These two don't need to be in an auto layout. You can do that, but I don't think that's, that's necessary. So now we're done with most of the basic things. Now we're gonna go to the hardest part, which is this one over here. This is the hardest one. So we need to go to the website again and I'm gonna uh, search for fitness icon, for example. I'm gonna grab some cool icons. You can filter on the left for free, by the way. Here we have a free one, beautiful, copy. Okay, now I have three icons. Let's first all make them the same size. So I'm gonna select all of them, make sure to link this one and then I'm gonna make them 45. All right, that looks decent. But as you can see with downloading icons, sometimes they don't look the same because this one looks a lot bigger. So sometimes you just need need to change it a bit and use your eyes in order to create something that looks a little bit similar. Okay, so we also need tree text, which is another one. It's 24 in size. So let's just do that. I'm gonna create a text layer. Let's just start with this one because I think it looks similar. Unlink it, 24, that looks good. Add that again. I'm gonna add some random text over here. I'm gonna make these texts red. So now you're probably thinking like, hey, we need a rectangle over here, but we can use auto layout in the same way as we use in the button, which is pretty cool. So first we need to put everything in an auto layout, but if we're gonna do that right now, it's gonna be in one row. So this is a vertical row, and this is a vertical row, and this is a vertical row. So three layouts, then all of these three also needs to be in an auto layout. So I'm gonna add an auto layout over here. All right, and now we can add the same kind of background as we did with the button. So I'm going to click over here and then click on white. Here you can see it adds a background. And now if we increase the padding, we can also create a box like this. So let's add our grid again by holding shift G. And I want this to be middle aligned. So first I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to move it up a bit by holding shift. So it goes straight up. And now if I increase the padding, it starts to scale from the left, but I don't want that. So there's another trick over here and that is constraints. So if you put the constraint, which is now on left on center, and now you start to increase the padding. Now this is what happens. Now it doesn't move to the right, which is kind of nice. We want it to be as wide over here. If we also change the space between or the element gap, then the sides also become bigger because this is the padding. So it always keeps 200 pixels. So first decide how much space you want in between the icons. So for example, 120 and then decrease this size in order to make it fit zoom in a little bit to make sure it's on the grid perfectly all right now shift g again and there's one more thing we need to do to this part and that is a shadow because i don't know if you've noticed but there's this soft very nice shadow under this part so i'm gonna click over here and we're gonna go to a new feature called effects click on the plus Drop shadow is the first feature. There are a few other ones, but for now we're just gonna use drop shadow. Click over here to change it. We need to increase the blur. So click over here and then increase the blur and make it really nice and soft. And for the color, I wanna use red, maybe a little bit darker. As you can see, this is starting to become really beautiful. I'm gonna also put it a little bit down, increase the blur again. Oh, this is so cool. I'm gonna decrease the opacity because it's a bit too intense, but now as you can see, it starts floating 
coating and there's a really nice contrast between that white background and this gray background with the red shadow in between. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. So let's now compare this design to our final design and we can see that there are still a few differences. This image is a bit taller than the text which is nice. It creates some balance. So let's just do that as well with our design. But if we just uh, go over here we make it higher by holding alt by the way you can do both sides. We don't actually have enough space for that. So we want to move the footer down but this layer is locked and these are two separate layers. So I want to show you one more thing and that is to use the constraints again but then in a different way. So make sure to find the layer for on the footer because you can't click on it and you can see this one is locked so let's just unlock that. So now we can edit the footer again. Select the footer. If you press shift A it's going to create an auto layout again. I don't want that because then it changes the padding. So in this instance I would use a group. So just right click and then group or shift G and now click on the group and then over here on constraints click on this one over here because that changes this one to bottom and that means that whenever you're going to change your artboard this one will stick at the bottom. So now if we click on our artboard you can see that our footer just sticks to the bottom which is nice because it happens a lot of times that, that you're making your page longer and adding elements so if you know that your footer and some layers need to be at the bottom just group it constraints bottom and that's really nice. I'm going to make it a bit longer. And then I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to make that an auto layout again to make sure that this one is aligned in the middle. And there we go. And then there's one more difference. And that is the background. Why does this one look better? It's because of the background. So you can change the background color of your whole Figma if you want to. So if you just click anywhere outside the background over here, you can change that as well. And that's what I did. And that's why that one just looks a little bit better. <laughs> and also the icons I see are a little bit thicker, uh, which I like a little bit better. So as you can see, it's super similar to our design. We've covered the basics, but if you want to learn more about Figma, then you can sign up for my Figma course. Right now, it's a waiting list. But if there's enough interest for the course, then I will create a Figma course. So if a thousand people sign up on this page, then I I will create that course and I will email everyone with a discount that signed up on the page. So that is nice and I also want to make this design when Elementor comes out with the container in Elementor which I think is also going to be pretty fun and then we can also make it look good on tablet and mobile. So hope you are excited about that. For now I want to thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video on living with pixels.